Uh, there's a lot of talk about the burden of proof, and I just wanted to point out, firstly, that you cannot prove the non-existence of a thing. And naturalists accept this. But the problem is, uh, when you invoke God as an explanation for that, what you're doing is you're invoking something that is inherently inexplicable. Thereby, you're not solving the problem, you're not explaining anything, you're confounding the problem. You have more to explain. And I just want to ask you, do you think that invoking God as a hypothesis about uh, natural things or the origin of life or the origin of the universe, I think that's an advancement to knowledge? Um. Now, repeat the first part of the question again, because I, I disagreed with what you said there. It is impossible to oh, prove yeah, right. the non It's impossible to prove something does not exist. That's, that's silly. Of course you can prove something does not exist. Uh, we can prove, for example, that there are no living Tyrannosaurus Rex on the face of the earth. We can prove that there are no Muslims of the United States Senate. Uh, or, as Dr. Shook says, if you can show that something is a self-contradiction, uh, he's in the house. Yeah. Uh, um, you can show that something is self-contradictory. So there are no married bachelors. So it's, it, this is an atheist line that you hear on a popular level all the time, but that sophisticated atheists don't take, because it is easy to prove that things don't exist. By now, that, I mean, now the question is, if it is the case that you can't prove that God does not exist, then you shouldn't be a naturalist. You should be some sort of agnostic or something, but you shouldn't say th go around saying things like, nature is all there is. There is nothing beyond matter and energy. There is no supernatural reality. Because those claims exceed what you yourself say you can prove. So you need to make more modest claims about your position that are, are more simply agnostic or something and find a new name rather than naturalism because that's, that isn't something that you can sustain the burden of proof for. Now the last part of your question assumed that I was presenting God as some sort of an explanatory hypothesis. And if you look at my arguments, they're not like that. These are deductive arguments. Now what that means is that if the premises are true, that the conclusion follows logically and necessarily. Whether you like it or not, whether you think it's explanatory or not, it doesn't matter. All that matters is, are the premises more plausibly true than not? Because if they are, then the conclusion is logically unavoidable. And so, yes, I think they definitely represent an increase in knowledge. This is an example of deductive logical reasoning. And it, it can't be impugned by saying that it's not uh, some sort of uh, explanatory inference to the best explanation or something of that sort. <laughs> <laughs>